So once again, what we're going to be doing is discussing how to utilize the money.net platform to put together a quote grid around the whole concept of recession resilient and profitable uh, assets. So the first thing I'm going to do is I go to my Mnet platform and let me go ahead and bring it on over here. Okay, and I'm actually going to open up a new template as a dry template. That way we can keep it linear. Alrighty, so here on menu, uh, I got to open up the scout scout chat too, so I can keep track of you guys and gals. So I'll open that up over here, and then in the menu, I want to go to the top left, and the first thing I'm going to do is add quote grid. Okay, so we get a quote grid added. Bada boom, and then we want to go to money.net, or I'm sorry, go to the menu tab, and we're going to want to go right over here to strategy builder. It's the second option right there. Awesome. Now, one thing I'm going to add to this, that's entirely up to you, if you want to add to it, is actually going to be trending stocks. Okay? So I add my trending stocks right there, and then add my usual tear sheet. Awesome. So my four things, quote grid, strategy builder, trending stocks, and tear sheet. Now, I'm actually going to put these in quadrants. So lower quadrant, yeah. Tear sheet, trending stocks, and then strategy builder, quote grid. Awesome. So this is my recession set. Now the first thing I'm going to do is this is right here on the strategy builder. It's right there as you load it up. You're going to see as we scroll down stocks for an inflation inflationary market. I click on that. This is a preset scanner that has already been set up to give us results of assets that are recession resilient. Uh, so we can go ahead and use that to get an initial base on what we're working with. If you have a sector biased, what you can do is actually go here to more criteria and you can actually select sector and industry right here. And you're able to pick, do I want something in utilities, financials, basic materials, energy, etc. Uh, so you are able to do that as well. I'm not going to be sector specific right now, but I'm just letting you know that that is something you can do. So we're going to go right down here to quote grid and we want to manage watch list. Okay. And we're going to do the, eh, let's create a new watch list. Okay. And we're going to see here, it says watch list one. Click on that. We get a nice empty list. On the left here, we see add symbol. That's how we'll be putting this list together. Now you can double click on the name here. Let's do this as the oh, recession playlist, playbook. There we go. Fix my shorthand. And now we can see that our top search right in here is coming up with ARLP. Huh. I don't know. I don't know a a l r a r l p off the top of my head. Let me look into it a little bit more. I come over here to the tear sheet and I can go, hmm, okay. Well, Resource Partners is a natural resource company which produces and markets coal to United States utilities and industrial users. Do I think coal is going to be doing good this year? Do I think uh, with all the energy crises, we may have to use it as an alternate form of energy? Maybe they're going to use it for the nuclear plants to help uh, heat up the water if they're not able to get the natural gas lines in. Okay, I could see that. I could see that being a possibility overall. How are they doing on the cash numbers? Let's see, we're looking on an enterprise value of 2.3. What's their uh, CapEx? 175 with a free clash of 285. Not bad. All right, looks like a lot of the analyst consensus is a buy in here with a 12-month price target of 26. Well, right now it's at 20. Hmm, that could be, uh, that could be interesting overall. I want to see this on a chart. So I click on the one-year chart. You'll see that pops up right there. And I can bring it down to my quote grid. Change things over to candlesticks. And we open up the chart and we see. 
Okay, well, we are getting to a 52-week high right here as a possibility. So maybe I put the thesis together, if and only if we're above 21, I will get long on this position, whatever suits your fancy. Now, set your alert in whatever purchasing platform you would uh, decide to work with, and that way you have the alert for 21, but make sure in the notes for that that you reference, go back and look at money.net quote grid list. Okay, so I like ARLP here, pretty good. My thesis on this is, if and only if we get above 21 with conviction in a trending market, I will get long on ARLP for a six-month position. I go here, add symbol, ARLP. I like it. And just for posterior, I can come over here to uh, the uh, stock trends and type in ARLP. Alliance Resources, click on that. And then I scroll down and I start seeing, okay, well, not a lot of discussion on it, which can be a good thing. Again, we're looking for a growth move. ARLP commodity name is like a fish out of water. Okay, interesting. Um, we're seeing some basically news right in here that is uh, its discussion. So it's trading just 2% uh, below its 52-week high. Okay, so possible uh, possible move there. Above average volume. Okay, I like that. I like that. So I'm starting to see that while there is a couple of people that are saying, you know, poo-poo, nay-nay on ALRP, most of, the, uh, most of the sentiment is bullish overall. Good for me. I like that. ARLP on the list. Got my alert set for 21. If and only if we're above 21, I get long on the position. We can see here flex, F-L-E-X. F-L-E-X. Let's see how they're doing. Mm, they're down. Okay. Bringing ourselves over. ROA is 5.33. Okay, not bad. Uh, we can see free cash flow is 579 with a capex of 441. Okay, net operating cash is one. So I like that. Analyst consensus is a strong buy. You know what? I'm I'm kind of curious on that aspect. But another big thing is uh, dividend in here. The dividend uh, gap. We're looking at 1.95. So yeah, interesting. Click on Analyst Recommendations, bring that down here, since it's a discussionary. We see darn near everybody is a buy, 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 with uh, price targets are kind of low. We can see that these are pretty recent, anywhere from last month, two months ago. So I like that. Uh, this is a maintained buy, an upgrade, and a maintain from Goldman, Argus, and JP. So that is, that is something that I like overall to see how that is working. Okay. Well, let's type it in here and see uh, FLNG. Let's see some discussion. Liquid Natural Gas News. And we have been talking about how the U.S. is sending more natural gas to Europe in these hard and odd times. Okay, I like the idea behind it, and it is cheap at the moment, so let's open up that chart. Right there, I'm gonna delete that other one. And you could just pull it up regular, but I'm just clicking buttons. So we look at this, and they are in a downtrend, coming to a supporting zone. Okay, I like that. I like to buy things at support. Get my line tool. We see the top right there. And it is at that supporting zone. So what I would look for on this is I want one week of bullishness. So with FLEX what I am looking at is for them to continue to push their way lower and then to get a movement up.
There we go. That was not right. I do apologize. I noticed that I had, I typed the word flex instead of their symbol. Ah, this is looking a lot better. Okay. Supporting structure right in here. Resisting structure here. So we're in a nice channel trade. Okay, good solid channel trade. If and only if we get above the 50% level, call it 27, 27.10, I'll get long and take that position for six months, eight months, looking for a price target around 30 on this just before we get to the, uh, get to the resisting part of the channel here. Clear half the position, lock in those profits, and then allow the rest of the house money to run. At which point I just won't pay attention to the position and I'll have my alert set up on it for am I below cost average or have I now reached excess profits? Am I up 100% on the position, 50% on the position? At which point I would look to take off half of that last half and continue to run the trade. But I like FLNG, strong sector, good setup, good tear sheet. So we add the symbol, FLNG. <laughs> so we'll bring that up. We'll bring up uh we'll bring up den. So looking here at den. Capex way more than free cash flow. Net operating cash flow, they're almost a one to one. But they they got a little bit of a uh, little bit of leeway there. Strong buy with a 12 month price target of 108. Okay, well, let's see who these analysts are that are making that. Are they analysts that have been successful in the past, or are they just your Joe Schmo down the street? We got a Citigroup at a buy with a price target of 81. Okay, Williams. 115, Roth, 87. So yeah, we're seeing an average of 108, but your big names are figuring your 80 to 90. Bank of America, 92. And that's uh, that was from six months ago. So they got another six months to go. 20 days ago was the Citigroup. And uh, how good Scott? Scott, oops. Scott's been 14% up. So you know he has some pretty good uh some pretty good aspects there so okay 81 you know not really out of the question uh but it is something to keep in mind and we are on a low so let's look at the chart den looking here at the chart with our candles set up we can see we are getting to supporting structure right in here dancing a little bit with it and we all saw what happened in the oil markets this morning. We do believe oil is going to drop a little bit more on this. With oil dropping just a little bit more, we can break that supporting structure and come down to the 50 area. And then we end up in a nice supporting channel for the election. Okay, so that's what I would look at is for a, a move down down to the support and then a move up that then we end up dancing in that channel so we down up down up and we dance in that channel for a little while until we get something to really drive us further now when it comes to competition there's not really a lot of competition in the sector so is what it is. Uh, there is an ETF holding this one, AFSM. So, okay, that works. So I like it overall. So do I think it's recession resilient? No, because it's so closely tied 
to um, the production of oil and nat gas. And while I think the nat gas side is going to be strong, I think the oil side is going to suffer a little bit here. So for right now, I would not put it in a 6 or 12 month position because of everything going on with the oil. I think it's going to fluctuate too much. So, But I do like it for trading and spreads. Alrighty, and then we have Dev and Energy right here. And this will be the last one that I do on this aspect. So D-E-V, oops, D-V-N, there we go, Dev and Energy. We can see they do have a decent amount of competitors. Okay, let the, uh, there we go. Free cash flow, 4.1 with CapEx at 2. Net operating, 6.2. Okay, pretty good. ROA is sitting at 16. Analyst, it's a buy with a 12-month price target, sitting at uh, 8158 Like it. Take a look at it. DVN, Devon Energy. We see RBC is a hold, but JP is a buy. Let's see. 6% average return. Okay, and that was just three days ago. Citigroup, uh, it's a buy from Scott with 14 Barclays is a hold at 90. Down 3, or yep, no, up 7%. So, you know what? I, uh, you know, I kind of like Devin right here. The analysts like Devin as well. Let's see, uh, let's see what sentiment is across the Twitter and Reddit sphere to just kind of gauge that. Uh, down in the pre market, well, yeah, it's going to fluctuate some. Um. Yep, people have been running shares and leaps. They're just talking about the pre-market stuff here. Support. So there are people talking about it. You know, they're talking about the pre-market stuff a little bit. And we can see that today's discussion activity is up 4% on the day, especially with earnings season coming in. But also that our weekly discussion is down and monthly discussion is down. I kind of like that because let the company focus on the company, not exactly what all the headlines are. So again, we can go over here to our quote grid, type in DVN, and add it to there. Alrighty, peeps, and you just continue to work those aspects. Make an analysis of the company. Do they actually have capital to work with things? How are they looking on the chart themselves? Do we have any factors coming up that would affect them? Using the recession inflationary scan here and then selecting by industry. Let's say you're mainly a tech person. Go for the tech industry. If you're mainly a minerals person, you know, minerals and oils, go for that. Uh, you're able to easily find those. And real quick, I'll show you that. So let's say you want to do a specific sector. We're going to clear all of those. And we're going to do something. Let's do, let's do real estate. Okay. Go to real estate, close this. We got nine assets coming up. VICI, Omega Healthcare, Kimiko, Medical Properties, LX Industrial, High Woods, uh, Kilroy Realty, Franklin Street, and Green Realty. And real quick, the first one on there, VICI. Bring it up, VICI. Let's see if it's worth a darn. They are rising up on the chart. They have a few competitors, but I would like to see the hard numbers. ROA is 5%. Hmm, okay, free cash flow, $1 billion, with a CapEx of 1.7. Net operating, $1 billion. Pretty good. Strong buy from the analysts. Do the analysts know what they're talking about? VICI. Raymond James is a buy. So good stuff. Raymond James, 11%. Deutsche Bank is a buy with a PT of 38. Uh, looking here at Jeffries, 4% uh, on the year from David there with a PT of 40. And this was in six days last month, etc. Current price target or current price is 3150. So you're looking at a gain of call it roughly six to seven bucks a share on that or where the analysts see things over the next 12 months. Bringing that over to the chart. VIVI. -V -I. Oh, V-I-C-I. 
VICI. Chart looks good. We're starting to get to the 52-week high at that 33 area. Okay, so I'd say starter position now. Let it run to that uh, top ceiling right in there, and if and only if it breaks that upper area, then you know I would add to the position on my aspect of things. Again, you have to make your own decisions. But I like the way that that's set up. I like the industry it's in. Uh, you can see right in here. So is a real estate investment trust which owns, acquires, and develops gaming, hospitality, and entertainment properties. So think of um, Nerd Street Gamers. Think of your uh, Hilton Inn, stuff like that. Stuff that is a uh, really entwined to your middle class and lower. Less business properties and more, um, more aspects of your vacations and your gaming. So I like it. So I'm going to go to Quote Grid. V-I, V-I-C-I, add to the list. Alrighty, peeps, so we've been going for a little bit here, but this shows you how to put together a recession list, and I'll continue to add to this list throughout the week, and then I'll post it at the end of the week. If you have any comments, suggestions, anything like that, please hit me up in the comments section or find me in the scout pit and uh, ask me questions there. We can uh, always continue to add to the list, remove to the list, and keep a track of things. Maybe we'll even... Uh, uh, keep track long term over the next six months for the rest of the year and see, okay, well, had we bought it XYZ, let's see, uh, let's see how the positions have gone. So, yeah, we'll keep an eye on that. I'll put a little reminder on my calendar. Well, as always, remember, your trades are in the history, and I'll see you around. Stay green, peeps.